All right, hello and welcome to the garden. And today I'm actually gonna be harvesting some spinach seeds. It's very, very simple and a lot of people seem to make it a lot harder than it is. Essentially what I've done is I just let this bed go to, go to seed here. And I had a lot of spinach tightly packed in and obviously we got a lot out of it, but eventually, um, like anything, it's gonna go to seed eventually because it's its way of reproducing. However, I wanted to save seed because I wanted to do a fall planting as well as a spring planting. So I wanted to make sure I had a lot of seed. So I let every single plant go to seed. I haven't pulled anything. I haven't, um, I haven't watered the bed at all. And it's been really nice because um, I got some great seed out of this. Now inevitably, I think I'm gonna actually get some sprouts that are gonna, um, some spinach sprouts that are gonna come up automatically from just seeds dropping off after a while. Because one thing that I've done is I've sun dried. I let the sun just dry every single plant in here. And I mean, they're very brittle. Um, some of these plants are just so, so brittle. And I mean, you can just hear them. They kind of just crumble like straw. And, um, and that's because I've let them dry out very, very well because I want the seeds to be very dry and the seeds to be very mature. And that's one key thing is that if you harvest your seeds too early, you're going to notice that the seeds have very poor germination and some might not even sprout at all because they're not mature yet. You don't want to harvest when the plant is green. The way uh, spinach actually reseeds is it will form, um, you get the, the little leaves, you get the leaves coming out and you'll notice that the leaves get smaller and smaller and smaller as the plant gets taller. And also the leaves will start to kind of change shape. When they're, when they're in their prime picking, they will be a nice round lobed leaf. However, when the, the spinach says, all right, it's time to bolt, um, it'll start to form kind of like a, uh, kind of like a spear shaped leaf. And it'll have kind of um, like a spear shape and then it'll kind of come up, almost like a spade. If you look at a spade uh, on a deck of cards, that's kind of what it looks like. And so that's the key that it's going to start bolting soon. And the lettuce, or not the lettuce, the uh, spinach is still good to eat. However, um, it just gets a little more bitter and the leaves get smaller and whatnot. So um, all that's fine. But needless to say, that's its sign that it's going to bolt. And when it bolts, it's going to start forming a flower top. That flower top will then um, form a lot of pollen. You will notice that if you bump against it, it'll just spread pollen everywhere. I mean, it's almost like corn. It just spreads crazy amounts of pollen. Um, and then you'll notice that near the leaf nodes, the actual flower does not produce the fruit. Near the leaf nodes, further down on the plant, you'll notice these little balls, these little uh, little balls starting to form in like little grape clusters. Those are the seeds, and they actually form outside the plant. The spinach does never, it never forms a fruit. Um, it, oh, mosquito. Um, the spinach never forms a fruit. And so unlike a tomato, it actually will form outside the plant. And so if you don't harvest it in time, it'll drop right off the plant, and you will inevitably just have spinach everywhere. So. Um, that's kind of how you do things. Um, I'm gonna bring you guys in close. It's so simple. It's very self-explanatory. I kind of want you guys to see what they look like and also know that um, that not every plant is gonna produce seed for you, I've noticed. A lot of them do, but there are occasional times you don't get seed. So um, if you notice your plant is shriveling up and dying, um, don't worry, there might be another plant that produces seed. But to, to get the maximum amount of seed and the best chance to get healthy seed, I would recommend saving at least four to five plants. Now in my case, I chose my entire bed because I didn't have anything else to plant. And I might plant beans or here or something, but I'm not too pressured because it's getting later in the season and I, I just wanted to get this seed so I could have a nice fall crop as well as get some seed to give away as well as also plant a spring crop. So I wanted lots and lots of seed. So I think I'm gonna get that today. So uh, come in close and see what I got here. So once you have all of your spinach dried out and ready to rock, um, you're gonna notice that it falls over. That's totally fine. It's gonna be dead, this is gonna flatten down, it's gonna look terrible. But what you're gonna notice is along these stems here, let me grab one for you. Along these stems, you're gonna notice all of these little nodules. All of these are actually seeds. And this is a great specimen. This actually has a lot of seeds on it. And what you do is you just pick off one of those nodules and you actually just uh, crumble it in your fingers. And what you'll notice is the seeds just come right out. There's no need to crack those, nothing. No need to do anything with those. Those are fresh seed ready to go. So I'm gonna continue harvesting these. I got a little uh, a, a cookie pan here. And I'm just gonna keep picking these. And, um, and it's really just as simple as pick off the nodes and just put them in the pan. And it is time consuming. If you want a lot of them, it's very time consuming. But they're very easy to do. 
They're very easy to harvest. And also with any seed, like I said, you need to make sure, number one, that it's mature and it's ready to be harvested. And the way you can tell that is if the, if the plant is basically dry and the seed comes right off, because that lets, that's the plant's way of saying, hey, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to, to reproduce. Um, also, you wanna make sure that it's an heirloom variety. If it's not an heirloom variety, you're gonna have a cross like anything. Um, not only tomatoes, but peppers. Any heirloom um, will give uh, basically seed that's true to its, its variety. Now, if you have a cross-pollination between two different types of spinaches, you're gonna have some kind of crazy cross between two spinaches. So, like I said, uh, this is a Bloomsdale long-standing spinach. It's my spinach of choice. It's an heirloom spinach. And, um, and it's very reliable in that sense. So with all that being said, it is an heirloom spinach and it's going to give me Bloomsdale long-standing spinach as long as there's not a cross or as long as I don't, um, as long as I don't randomly plant two different varieties in here and then save seeds from both of them, not knowing. So I typically stick to just that one variety. All right, so I've kind of got this narrowed down. It looks really great. As you guys can see, I got tons and tons of seed, um, probably close to thousands, I would say. Um, definitely thousands, but um, not sure exactly how many I have. Um, but I was thinking, you know, kind of expanding on this idea of separating out the um, the seeds because I, I was kind of just getting really bored of picking off one individual cluster at a time. That's great for small amounts, but I wanted a ton. So what I actually did was I would harvest, um, I would harvest the whole bundle, and I would actually just like kind of crunch it in my hands and just like mash it in between my hands, and the seeds would fall through, and I would be left with just the stalks and some leaves. Sometimes you get a lot of leaves and and um, and material in here, um, like this. You know, you get stuff like that, and, um, and there you go. You can see it. And it's just like little twiggy stuff from the actual plant. So you get a lot of plant material, and I was noticing, you know. Uh, that I was, I was kind of finding something as I was sifting through it. You know, I'd shake it or whatever, and I would notice that the lighter stuff would come to the surface, which is obviously no mystery because the, the most dense stuff will go down to the, the bottom, and the, the lighter stuff would go to the top. And, um, and, you know, I was like shaking it back and forth and stuff, and I thought of, I, I went back to my lettuce video where I actually showed you guys how to refine your lettuce seeds, and I applied it to this method and it actually worked even better. So basically what I've been doing is I've just been taking it like this, kind of like, kind of working it to one side and then swirling it and then I'll give it a gentle breath. And what that gentle breath does is it actually blows away the lighter material, leaving the heavier seeds. And if you lose some seeds in the process, those are seeds that probably wouldn't sprout in the first place because they're probably infertile. So it's a win-win situation. It actually helps you get a better germination rate. So um, kind of just shaking this and then And hopefully you guys can see that. Um, here, I'll see if I can bring it up closer, maybe. See, I'll see if I can get it. Here, I want. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not. But I mean, like all this light material kind of just blows away. And it leaves, the, uh, it leaves just the seeds. I can just keep doing that. It takes a little bit longer than, than a normal refining process, but it really helps. Whew. Whew. Blew up my face there. I mean, as you guys can see, even by my arm, the, uh, the lighter material just kind of blows off and, um, and you're left with some beautiful seed here. And yes, you still have some, some kind of twiggy material that can obviously be refined by further, by further blowing, but um, you know, I think I'm satisfied with this. I'm just gonna kind of pick out some of the bigger chunks and, um, and I think that I'm just gonna be fine with that. Um, so, looks good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I ended up with quite a bit of seed there. I further refined it a little bit more after I said I was done. And I did think I'd make a quick note though that uh, also when you're doing this method, um, you know, and you're not picking off the little little chunks, you just take the big, the big bundle of it and just kind of roll between your fingers. 
I was noticing that I do get some green seed, some um, some basically unripe seed, some immature seed, um, and that cannot obviously be refined. So you definitely have to make sure you go through there and pick out the green seed, and I've done a pretty good job of that. Um, however, there might still be some in there, uh, but that's fine because obviously I have much more mature seed than I do immature seed. But um, basically my point of saying that was that uh, when you do that method, you can't pick out the freshest uh, the most mature seed that's ready to be picked. So you're basically getting everything all at once and it's much more of a production method of harvesting seed. All right, so actually what I wanna do is now that I have all this stuff harvested, it's looking great, I actually wanna give some away to you guys. I don't need all of it and I won't use all of it ever. I mean, I got so much seed that I don't know what to do with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give some of this seed away. And so what I want you to do is send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address in the description box below and note if it's not self-addressed if it does not have a return address um, and it's not stamped and it does not have an additional uh, letter for me to send back to you um, you will not get anything so I know a lot of people do that but it's because simply I have so many people requesting seeds all the time and if I were to have to pay for the stamps and the envelopes and everything I simply would be absolutely broke um, I get probably about a hundred requests a week about first free seeds. And there's simply no way I can I can do that. I don't have that many free seeds available. So what I wanna do for this time and this time only is I'm going to keep this open until the end of August. If you guys send your envelope by the end of August, you'll get it. Um, if I, I, my cutoff point is the end of August. So send in your envelope as soon as possible because August is pretty crazy for me so I wanna make sure that I have enough time to uh, to get everybody's envelopes shipped out so just make sure like I said stamp self-addressed envelope inside of another envelope send it to the uh, description box and send it the link in the description box below and I will get you guys your seeds you guys can have some fresh Bloomsdale spinach seeds harvested this year grown organically grown here by the MI Gardener and uh, I will talk to you guys later hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode hope you guys learned something new and as always I'll talk to you guys later see ya bye